Hi there and welcome. Today I have this telephone network emulator on my bench and um, before I can use it I'm going to convert it from 110 volts to uh, 230. I'm not going to go into detail about what this machine can do. Uh, I will leave that for another video. But uh, right now we're just concentrating on uh, converting it from 110 volts to 230. So if we look at the back here, there's a fuse holder and the plug. Um, and then there's this label here that says 110 or 220 volt AC. And uh, I just happen to know that this one is wired for 110. Uh, the, the, the or here, the 110 or 220, it actually means it's either one or the other. Uh, it's not like it can handle both 110 and 220 volts. It's not a universal power supply, to put it another way. So we have to open it up and try to figure out how the thing works internally, uh, at least the power supply. and. Um, and then rewire the thing. And as you can see, it's jam packed with electronics. There are lots of boards. But uh, from what I can see here, uh, this is not connected. Means it must have been opened at some point. Uh, but we have here, on this side on the left, we have a switch mode power supply. And we have two transformers here. You can maybe see that it says uh, 15 volt, 19 volt down here, plus minus 15. Uh, minus 21 plus 21 and the other power supply the switch mode on the left it just has one voltage input uh, sorry one voltage output which is uh, 5 volt I'm not sure you can see it but the switch mode power supply has a label down here that says uh, 85 to 250 volts so the switch mode power supply should be able to handle 220 volts without problem so the main issue will be these two big uh, normal transformers yeah why did, why did they do it like this uh, I believe the switch mode power supply uh, delivers 5 volts, that is for all the digital stuff. And then these two transformers here, they will supply the plus minus uh, power supplies for the RB amps and for all the analog stuff. So um, what we need to rewire is this analog power supply board here. And uh, I will take it out and uh, then we will have a look. So here we have the analog power supply and uh, it's quite... Uh, a normal construction. We have power coming in up here. There are quite a few connectors and I don't know what uh, is used for what. But the power comes in here, goes to the transformers, um, then goes through some diode bridges. Uh, it's basically two identical circuits. We have one here with a diode bridge and some capacitors and another one here with a diode bridge and some capacitors. So uh, it's quite, quite a straightforward design. And uh, finally, after it's been uh, rectified and uh, smoothed out by the capacitors, we have some voltage regulators down here uh, on these two heat sinks. So, uh, it's, it's, it's pretty easy, I think. Um, the other thing that it has is the 5 volt input from the uh, switch mode power supply is on this cable here. So this board also uh, not only works as an analog power supply, it also works as a power distribution board for the 5 volt digital uh, supply coming in here. So uh, the power from these uh, power supplies goes through these cables together with the 5 volt. If we flip it over, we can see it's a two layer design and uh, basically uh, just the power coming in and going out through these wires here. Let me try and uh, reverse engineer this thing and then uh, we should be able to uh, rewire it for, uh, for 220 volts. Okay, so basically this is how I think it works. Uh, I haven't traced everything, uh, but uh, this is a rough estimation. Uh, basically we have the big transformer and it has uh, three windings on the outputs. One is uh, generating a plus supply, one is generating a negative supply uh, using a LM317 and a LM337 uh, uh, respectively. And then we have a bigger supply here that is unregulated. And we have two circuits like this on the board. So for 110 volt supply, we will basically just connect these two uh, transformer primaries uh, in parallel. So that we have um, live and neutral here, and live and neutral here. And then we have 110 volt on each. Uh, however, if you want 220 volts operation, I believe uh, these will be connected together like this. So we have one live and one neutral here. And then we have of course uh, the voltage, the 220 volt. Uh, being dropped and uh, with 112 with 110 volt here and 110 volt here. This is a basic uh, voltage divider. Um, so the thing is, how do we figure out 
uh, the PCB wiring around these two transformers because there's no change to the transformer if we look at the hardware there's no way there's no jumper or anything that we can wire this up with everything is just soldered in but I think I have to ohm out all these connectors and the primary side on these transformers uh, to figure out how to rewire this board for 220 volt operation okay so I just uh, had a look at the PCB and it was quite easy to trace because it's a two layer board and there's no ground plane so uh, it's possible to look straight through the PCB and uh, even under the transformers if you shine a light in under there it's possible to see what's going on so uh, if we look at it we have the one transformer here and one transformer here and this is the primary side and these are the secondary sides and uh, we can see that the power comes in through here um, these are connected um, uh, directly together these are these two are connected directly together these two directly together and these two directly together and then we have um, the earth wire a green a green and yellow wire here coming in through here that goes to the diode bridge as an earth so um, I'm not going to show all the diode bridges and whatever because this is on the secondary side and that's not interesting for us and what we have on this side of the PCB is some kind of um, uh, power distribution so uh, that is not interesting to us either uh, something that's quite interesting to note is that some of these signals here which are 5 volt uh, and uh, plus minus uh, 15 volt and what have you and they actually get the power from over here because this is where we have the diode bridges uh, the rectifiers the electrolytic capacitors and the voltage regulators they are all sitting on this uh, side here on the right so the output from uh, from this circuit here they are actually going under the transformer like this between the the pins here so the gap here between the 220 volt 110 volt the high power side and the secondary side is actually uh, it's okay but it's not too good and i think in these days you wouldn't wire it up like this um, indeed i don't think you would ever pass any c marking uh, with this kind of arrangement here but uh, this is back in 95 or something like this and actually the gap is okay so uh, i don't really have an issue with it but it's just a bit uh, untraditional, uh, let's say, to wire the PCB like this. So this is what we got. We got two primary side windings and two secondary side windings. And the way they should be wired up is uh, normally that these two uh, primary side windings would be in parallel for 110 volt uh, input and they would be in series for 220 volt input. So what we have to figure out now is how these two uh, wirings are being switched um, when we select either 110 or 220 volts. Okay, so I pulled out the power input and the EMI filter. And uh, actually, it's still available. I found it on DigiKey. And uh, the schematic for this thing is here. And the schematic actually shows the input coming in here, going through a filter, um, going through an on-off switch of some sort. I think this is more for safety. Um, but anyway, um, we have some kind of configuration here because we have a transformer that is 100, 100 volts or 220 and uh, that is basically the configuration we have in our transformer so um, yeah it should be able to just based on these configurations here uh, we should be able to uh, change it from 110 to 220 volts and uh, something really interesting that I probably should have known before I started uh, is shown here in that there's a little board that can be pulled out you have to remove the fuse and then you pull out the board and you flip it over and then automatically it will rewire internally um, and uh, then connect the correct uh, transformer windings based on this little uh, board here so actually I shouldn't have pulled it out from the box I didn't have to go through uh, looking at the transformers and whatever but uh, simply just flip that thing here so uh, yeah, that's what we're going to do, and then I'm going to put the box back together. Okay, so what we're going to do is to pull the fuse by doing this. Then the fuse came out, and uh, then it should be possible to remove this little PCB here. Uh, do we have to move that even further or put it back? No. How do we pull that thing out? There we go. And you can see it says 115 on this side and if I flip it like this it is 230 
If I flip it to the other side, nothing. So basically, all the wiring happens on this little PCB here. So um, yeah, I just have to put it back in. Like this, and put the fuse back. And uh, that's it. I have to put this back in the box. And uh, we should be on 230 volts when uh, that is done. One thing I noticed before I put everything back together was that the fan unit here is only 110 volts and not uh, able to run at 220. So I got a little curious and tried to uh, dig a little bit deeper. And uh, what I found out was quite interesting actually. So uh, let's take a look at how this uh, uh, line input filter here is uh, wired internally. So what I figured out was that, that in this line filter there was, apart from the filter itself um, and the fuse, there was this little PCB that I showed you earlier. And that will reconfigure these connectors here on the back. There are eight connectors and the PCB is shorting out these two here. And these three wires here, or these three uh, pins here, when it's in 110 volts uh, mode. And what happens then is that the transformer, which has two windings, is uh, connected through here from live. The, the current flows in here through the transformer winding and back out again. And the other transformer winding is not connected. So it's just using one winding here. So we have 110 volts across one single winding here. And as you can see, the fan is connected between these two wires. So everything is good. The fan has 110 volts. For the 220 volts configuration, the PCB uh, connects these pins here uh, on the filter itself. And what we see is that the voltage uh, is 220 volts. The current runs in through here, runs through this transformer, gets circled back out and runs through this transformer winding here. So we have two transformer windings uh, in series, each with 110 volts across them. So that works really well. And again, we can see that the fan is just connected across one transformer wire. So the fan will have 110 volts. So it's actually quite clever. It's using one of the transformer windings to limit the voltage across the fan. And so everything is actually working really well. So really, I have no worries just flipping the PCB uh, for reconfiguring this and uh, switching it on and everything should be fine. So uh, now I understand how it works and I hope you do too. So actually, uh, I've been re-engineering this uh, power supply input here and actually it showed something interesting. So I hope this video is not completely wasted. Uh, we could actually learn something from this. So anyway, I'll put it back together now and uh, then we'll switch it on and see what it uh, can do. Okay, so I screwed it back together and uh, Let's power it on and see what happens. And yeah, that's it. Uh, everything is good. And uh, as you can see, it's a telephone network emulator that I have here. And yeah, I'm not going to talk about it here. Uh, it's a big subject all by itself. Uh, but I have another one coming tomorrow. This one is model 151 which is um, the base model. I have another one coming tomorrow, which is uh, the, the top model. So um, I will make another video in a couple of days, hopefully, uh, that explains what this thing is, what it can be used for. And uh, yeah, I know this was an idiot video, or at least a video made by an idiot. Uh, I should have uh, looked around at the back first before I opened it up, uh, but I think I learned something. Uh, quite clever how they uh, use the fan here. But yeah, anyway, uh, thanks for watching and uh, see you again real soon.